Chairs No Waiting, episode number 591, Mayberry Meetup 2020 Report. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Weavers has all kinds of great Mayberry items, but hey, head over there and check it out. They've got seven exclusive t-shirt designs that you can get. Go over and check them out. They're right there on the front page. You can click it. You can see them all. They also have some Mayberry beach towels. So if you're heading to the beach or or wherever you might be that you need to dry off later, (laughs) get you some Mayberry beach towels and stay all dried up. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of episode number 591 are the members of the... uh, that came to the Mayberry meetup. They, they, it's the, all of you guys. So thank you. Thank you for helping support the podcast and thank you for being here with me. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Mayberry meetup 2020 because wow, we had a good time or at least I did. And you know what? It was time that we needed, uh, I think to just get away and have a little bit of fun and get out from, uh, you know, just all the bluster and goings on of the whole world. And we were able to get together and visit and have some Mayberry fun. Now, we were careful, but we did that. So we're going to talk about that. And if you're watching the video version, you'll see some photos and stuff that as we go. Uh, but if you're not, I'm going to try to tell you everything that's going on. So don't feel like you're getting left out or nothing. I think it'll be all right. So uh, Jan and I, we went off into the mountains. That So it was hot. Oh, it was, it was hot. Oh, it was hot. So we headed off into the mountains on that Friday of the Mayberry meetup. And and I'll tell you, it was uh, was a good idea because it was warm that day. But we got to go up and head toward uh, the Mayberry Trading Post up in uh, Virginia. Up in uh, Mayberry, Virginia. Now, I don't know how many of y'all have ever been there and seen it and done stuff. But uh, the Mayberry Trading Post is, is really, really close to this place called Mayberry Creek. Now, maybe you've never been to Mayberry Creek, but if you have, Mayberry Creek is just, I mean, you can almost throw a rock to the road where you turn to head to see the Mayberry Trading Post. Now, we always stop at Mayberry Creek, by the way. It's right off the Blue Ridge Parkway. If you're in Mount Airy, North Carolina, it's about 30 miles up to the Mayberry Creek and to the Mayberry Trading Post. And you can you can drive up and and it's it's a nice cool drive it's so pretty you get all kinds of nice views off of the off of the mountain and it's it's just a real pretty place Uh, and i can't imagine there's rhododendron all over the place up there and wow if you could make it up there during while they're blooming which i don't know what time of year they bloom but wow it would be pretty uh, but we had to stop and take pictures and, you know, and visit her mother. Oh, well, no, that's a different story. But uh, we we went from the Mayberry Creek over to the Mayberry Trading Post. Now, this place was built in 1892. <laughs> 1892. It's still there. It's been in operation for more than 150 years. Uh, and so we went, and it's a, it's a little general store. And you can go in there and buy all kinds of goodies. And it's just, it's a very neat place to visit. But the real secret of it is that Andy's mother grew up in this area. So the name Mayberry came more than likely from Mayberry, Virginia, where Andy's mother grew up. And now the the Mayberry Trading Post used to be a post office. That's right. It It was a post office. People went in there and picked up their mail and now it closed down as a post office uh, back in 1922, but from uh, about 1872 until 1922, there was a Mayberry post office and Mayberry Creek post office is what it was called. So we had a good time there and got to see all kinds of fun stuff uh, as we went through the weekend. We headed back into, from there, we headed back into Mount Airy. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it but there's a road called the andy griffith parkway now that's where the mayberry motor inn is located but it just also happens to be a road called newsome street that's right newsome street 
Well, you know, and it intersects with the Andy Griffith Parkway and Newsom Street and the Andy Griffith Parkway. So somebody had to stop and get their picture made at the sign. Now, and it could have been me. Spent sign. My name is Newsom. I thought this was a good, good time to check. And it's a Newsom Street and Andy Griffith Parkway. And sure enough, the signs were still there. Everything was good. Uh, we had a good time. The tribute artists were. Several of us were at this event, and uh, Jeff Branch, uh, Howard Sprague, he even bought us, because, you know, all the COVID stuff that's going around currently, he brought us masks with our characters on the front. So Jeff's has Howard, mine has Floyd, and Otis's. He had uh, Otis on his, so, of course, we had to get our pictures made wearing them <laughs> together. But uh, those are those are fun. We, we sat around outside the gazebo on both Friday and Saturday night and had an absolutely wonderful time. There was, there was, let's see, on Friday night, let's see here, there was, uh, I'm trying to look here in my book, uh, 61 folks showed up on Friday night. And then on Saturday night, we had 69, at least that wrote down their names for us. So we think that that's about how many we had. We don't know. If there was just 69 total people or a few more than that, I think there's somewhere around 75 people or so that were there during the weekend. And and we did a pretty good job of, uh, you know, being respectful to the social distancing stuff because I know people have got this COVID stuff going on in 2020. Now, someday you guys are going to hear this and go, <laughs> they did what? But uh, we had to stay away from each other because there was that virus that was going around. And nobody wanted to get sick. But we sat around and we watched the Andy Griffith show on the big screen. And everybody visited and talked at a distance. And they yelled at each other. And uh, and families kind of sat together. And folks wore masks if they felt like they were getting too close to somebody or anything like that. It was just the Mayberry thing to do, to tell you the truth. And so Saturday night we did all that, uh, gathering together and visiting Sunday morning, we had the Mayberry Bible study, uh, and this year it was a little different. We didn't actually do it based on an episode of the Andy Griffith Show, but I really felt like with all the stuff that had been going on in and around the world recently, that just sitting there and talking and trying to talk about some of the good things that could have happened because you've been stuck at home and unable to get out and do things like you normally do. There's, a, there's some good silver linings for some of those things. So we were able to visit and talk about that as well. So all in all, I thought it was a great weekend. Everybody headed on home right after the, uh, the Bible study period. Most people headed home and were able to, you know, get back in time to go to work or whatever they needed to do. So I should have mentioned on Saturday night we had a, well, we call it a, Tri uh, amateur tribute artist contest but it's not really even a contest uh this uh indiana steve i think is who came up with this idea indiana steve in our chat room uh he's the one that came up with this idea i think last year may have been the first year we did it and i honestly didn't believe anybody would participate but they did and wow it was so fun it was a lot of fun everybody enjoyed it so we did it again this year and the and and like I said, it's not really a contest. It's more of a uh, a parade. That's what I think Steve ended up calling it. We had uh, a fella, Mike Creech, known him for years. He dressed up as Countess Vantalecki. Now, granted, we've never seen him, but Mike had a, not, an old 17th century, uh, not 17th century, 1700s, 18th century outfit on. And he, he had the box with the lamp and the cards and the, everything in there. So Mike was ready to go as County as Vantalecki. Great job he did. We, uh, Steve Hinkley, he had, his, uh, he had his Regis sign and outfit ready to go. So he was Regis. And Dewey Lamb, I don't think I have a picture of Dewey, though. Dewey Lamb was also Regis. So we had two Regises. And, uh, and Rita... Steve 
Indiana State's wife, she was the shoplifter. She came out there and she had on a trench coat and there she was running out to get in, coming to, to the parade to be judged by everybody. She was clinking the whole way there. And so we, we, went, we went in and got a scale and asked her to step up onto it. <laughs> wow, great fun. She had, she had stuff hanging all around her. And she, every, every step she took was clank, 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 clank. It was great. I don't think anybody had done the, her before. We had Vicky. She dressed up as, uh, let's see, she was Karen Moore. You know, Thelma Lou's cousin, Karen, that could shoot the gun, shoot the rifles and stuff. You know, she played Annie Oakey, Oakley on uh, on Annie Oakley. Uh, and so, anyway, she was uh, she did that one. We had uh, we had... We had Kentucky Mike and his wife were, they were uh, Jerry Miller. He was, <laughs> and the, and the, he was the Sultan. It was the Sultan and, and the dancer. She was the dance. It was awesome. Uh, they were, uh, they were probably the winner. We didn't really have a winner. And honestly, the, we had everybody clap for all the different uh, contestants and it was almost dead even. Uh, but we all kind of just really liked this one because nobody had ever done the Sultan at all. So that was pretty fun. And uh, like Dewey Lamb, he gave away all kinds of door prizes he had there with us. And he was also, he had his down with the gold standard sign. He was there. We had Goober Fife. He was Diamond Jim uh, from Diamond Jim's Butcher Shop. Our meat is tough is what his sign said. <laughs> So these folks, they came up with some great ideas about uh, costumes they could come up with, with characters that nobody had ever seen, but we had heard about on the Andy Griffith Show. Diamond Jim's uh, butcher shop sign said, uh, we're 10 cents cheaper than Foley's. Ask me about a 150 p uh, pound meat bundle. <laughs> oh, it was great. It was absolutely great. So we had uh, a whole crew. Oh, Oh, I didn't even talk about it. We had the uh, convicts at large. There was three of them. We had all three of the convicts at large there, and it was absolutely – they. Uh, the ladies did a great job with that as well. Uh, man, it was just – it was so much fun for us all just to be able to, I don't know, get away from uh, being stuck at home and just enjoy some fun and laughter together. And everybody kind of tried to judge the – the different uh, folks that had dressed up to we tried to kind of come up with a winner but in all honesty they were all winners i know that sounds that sounds kind of corny in today's world because that seems to be what everybody always does but it was really true they also had a raffle that they had where people had donated items uh to the the raffle the money actually went toward uh toward the podcast so they presented me with the money to help pay for all the the different things that i incur the expenses of doing the podcast you know like getting new cameras or buying new different equipment or paying my hosting fees so there was a lot of uh, really nice things donated so everyone who donated to the raffle or donated by giving a contribution thank you for that that was like, super nice of you uh, i mean there was just so much giving going on this weekend that uh i just can't i can't say enough about how much i appreciate everybody that was able to make it there i'm sorry if you couldn't make it there to be a part of the meetup but it was a really really fun special weekend it always is we always have a good time at the meetup dewey lamb brought so many items uh he gave away he gave away a Huckleberry Smash and a Nectarine Crush. And he gave both of those. He had Miracle Salve and Barney Fife Gun Oil and Her Colonel Harvey's Indian Elixir. And uh, he just, he always goes above and beyond just helping us uh, have fun with uh, the Mayberry stuff. Uh, we got to see Phil Lee. Now, some of you guys may not know Phil Lee. He was the original Ernest T. Bass when we when I first started doing Floyd the Barber at Mayberry Days. It was only David Browning as as the Mayberry deputy, and Phil Lee was the uh, Ernest T. And that's uh, he was there and visited with us that weekend. Uh, it was just 
I know I'm just kind of gushing on, and, and if you weren't there, you're probably not enjoying this very much. But I just want to encourage you, if you get an opportunity to, to be a part of anything like that, and you're not afraid or you're not, your health's not a problem, think about it. My prayer is that everybody return home safely and there's no illness or anything from the Mayberry Motor Inn and from the meetup. Uh, we had a murder mystery, the Mayberry murder mystery that Steve, uh, Indiana Steve did. And we had uh, folks going around trying to figure out what the murder mystery was. We had uh, we had chocolate that was for the meetup that had little pictures of stuff from the Andy Griffith Show on it. Uh, it was it was a fun weekend that I think a lot of people really needed just to be able to get out of the house for a little while and visit together in a Mayberry way because we just all been kind of stuck in the home for quite a while, and so anyway. I think everybody had a good time, and I know I did. But uh, it was a it was a very fun and special weekend. So here's what the next thing I want to remind you or tell you about. So if you couldn't come, or even if you could, we're going to be trying to do some uh, meetups online because uh, we're going to do some Zoom meetings possibly, or some gatherings over on. Uh, Maybe at the Facebook page, uh, the group, we can do it there. But we're wanting to try to just keep everybody's spirits up. Because this doesn't look like it's going to end anytime real soon. So in the next few weeks, I'll let you know, probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll do something on a Friday or a Saturday night and get together. And maybe we can, uh, I don't know, we'll do something Mayberry together online if you'd like to do that. So right now it's... Uh, it's June or June. It's July the twentieth as I record it. So this should be coming out on the twenty first, uh, and we will have a, a, some type of an online Mayberry meetup probably in August. So be looking around, be watching for that. We'll do something. Uh, I just don't know what. So I can have up to a hundred people, a hundred connections uh, connected at one time if we do a Zoom event. Okay, so we, we'll we'll try to do something. I want everybody to keep their spirits up and keep the keep the good feelings going, and join in with us because I think you'll you'll definitely in, you'll definitely uh, have your spirits lifted if you can be around a bunch of Mayberry people because I know that's what happened to me and I think to all of those who attended uh, this event. So uh, it was good, oh, boy. I'm really uh, we had a great time. And again, I, I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it that were able to come. I hope those of you who couldn't come got just a little bit of a feel for it. Uh, I think everybody did a good job of not doing anything that would get them uh, sick or get anybody else sick. Uh, I tell you one thing I did fine because I didn't because we didn't have some of the events we usually have like Betty Lynn couldn't sign autographs. Neil Brower didn't get to do his uh, event that he does, his presentation. So we had more time on Friday and Saturday to go and do things during the day. I saw a lot of people that had gone up to the Mayberry Trading Post. Uh, a bunch I talked to had done the Mayberry Squad Car Tours. And the thing I got to do was I found the place that I had been hearing about for years called the, uh, the Dairy Center. <laughs> the Dairy Center. Now, that was somewhere I had never heard about because people would always tell me, hey, the ice cream is really good at the Dairy Center. And I'm always like, well, the ice cream's good at Walker's and everywhere else, which is a true statement. But I, I will say that Kentucky Mike in our chat room, he posted that he went over to the Dairy Center and got some uh, banana pudding flavored ice cream. Well, that put a hankering on me. And so when we found the Dairy Center, that was what I got. And that was on Friday when I found it. And so on Saturday, I went back again. Because <laughs> the banana pudding uh, ice cream is a winner if you like banana pudding. They also had all kinds of other flavors, and it's all homemade. Uh, great place uh, great place to get you some ice cream if you want it. Or any place down on Main Street. They have great ice cream, too. It's, uh, but they don't have banana pudding ice cream that I've been able to find. I will be looking because that was 
that was a winner for me. I'm still trying to figure out how to make it because it's homemade. They made it homemade. So the Dairy Center, uh, it's pretty good. So we also had, uh, you know, it was hot. Oh, it was hot. So one of our industrious members made a, a made fans like you used to give. You remember when you go to church, maybe when you was real young or maybe to some other kind of outdoor event or somewhere inside didn't have air conditioning. They give you a fan with a wooden stick that, that you could use the fan and wave and keep yourself cooled off. Well, one of our industrious uh, members brought a eighth annual Mayberry Meetup fans. So they're they're wooden they're wooden stick wooden handle fans that boy you could uh, you could fan with, and uh, so we want to thank Lydia in the chat room for doing that because these are awesome. They they folks would have probably paid her for these if she had just sold them for a dollar or two, <laughs> but she was nice enough to just give them out. So if, this was a great idea. If we do it again next year, we're gonna have to collect money to make sure that that she can afford to do it again every year <laughs> because they're great. And they had a picture of some rocking chairs on it and uh, the Mayberry Motor and Gazebo as well. So thank you, Lydia. Uh, for doing that uh, it saved a lot of people a lot of people out there who were suffering from the heat that is definitely it. yeah it's not it's not from uh, nielsen's funeral parlor uh and, and but it is they were really nice fans it says on there relax what's your hurry <laughs> so it's great so great idea great fans uh they were bigger than normal too so they're bigger they made more wind when you when you used them it was really and they didn't come apart they were very nice solid now the ones I always got at church I always end up folding in half and then it was flop around and make noise you, then you couldn't use it because you're at church <laughs> so, all right so anyway thanks for everybody that was involved in that I really hope you hope it uh hope it lifted your spirits the ones that could come I hope it lifted your spirits just hearing about it and hopefully we'll do a little bit of online stuff here pretty soon. And all of you can participate if you're around. And we may do more than one, you know, might do a Friday one week and a Saturday the next. So everybody gets a shot at it uh, of coming in and just having a little bit of fun. Okay. All right. So keep your spirits up and I'll do my best to help you out. So let's, let's move along from that. Thanks again for the Mayberry meetup. It was a success with about, I don't know, 75 people or so total for the weekend. Great weekend, uh, and now the goal. Now the goal is in the next two weeks to find out nobody got sick that came. That's 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 my goal. So there was a lot of hand sanitizer and stuff used during this entire event. So all right, so let's move now to hear from Randy Turner with this week in Mayberry history. <laughs> Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. Rockney Tarkington is known to Mayberry fans as the first African American to have a speaking role on the show, but he had a broad career that ranged from Broadway to black exploitation films to devoting his life to Mormonism. Rockney was born in Junction City, Kansas on July the 15th, 1931. The beginnings of his career cannot be answered with specificity. The Internet Movie Database, not always known for its reliability, indicates Rockney made his debut in both television and film in 1963, but Rockney himself said otherwise. The actor indicated he had appeared earlier than 1961 in various series. His appearances were likely as a background actor, which may explain the gap in the online source. While there is no way to ascertain which was his first television role, it could have been The Red Skelton Show, which began back in 1951. But Skelton Show ran so long, it could also have been in Have Gun Will Travel or Meet McGrath, both of which debuted in 1957. Regardless, he also appeared in Man with a Camera, which starred Charles Bronson, The Texan, Shirley Temple's Storybook, and Day in Court, all of which began in 1958. 
Rockney also indicated he appeared in several films earlier than online sources indicate. Those movies being South Pacific and The Buccaneer from 1958 and Porgy and Bess in 1959. He also acted on the stage in California early in his career, appearing in several plays in Los Angeles and at the Beverly Hills Theater. The reason I used 1961 as the threshold is because Rockney appeared that year as one of the leads alongside Dennis Hopper in Rockney's only Broadway show, The Controversial Mandingo. The information about Rockney's earlier appearances were all listed by him in his bio in the show's playbill. Rockney was six foot five inches tall and often played imposing figures. He was a police officer in the Alfred Hitchcock Hour in 1963, a soldier in the 1963 film Soldier in the Rain, another soldier in the 1964 series The Great Adventure, and yet another soldier in 1965 in the series Bob Hope Presents the Chrysler Theater. Rockney also appeared in the 1965 comedy adventure Clarence the Cross-Eyed Lion and appeared in other series such as The Man from U.N.C.L.E. in 1964 and 1966 and in Bewitched in 1966. Rockney also made his first of four appearances in 1966 as a recurring character, which would later be followed by four more appearances as different characters in the TV series Tarzan. In 1967, Rockney appeared in Mayberry as Flip Conroy, a Mayberryan who had left town and become a professional football player and was returning to coach the school team. Flip later revealed that in addition to his physical prowess, he was also a trained pianist. Rockney is often referenced as the only African-American to ever have a credited speaking role on The Andy Griffith Show. He was the first, and technically the only example in the town of Mayberry, but he was not the only one in the series, as two other African-Americans had speaking roles in the tropical location where Howard Sprague briefly moved. Rockney was a regular in Danger Island, the only live program within a program, the rest being animated, on the Banana Splits Adventure Hour. He appeared in a small part in the 1970 film The Great White Hope, which starred James Earl Jones and Jane Seymour. He was the main villain in The No Mercy Man, a 1973 revenge film, which also starred Richard X. Slattery, who had played Barney's boss in Raleigh. The film was one that Quentin Tarantino later showed as part of a program of revenge films. Rockney was originally cast as one of the leads in the 1973 Bruce Lee film, Enter the Dragon. While at least one source says he was replaced at the last minute before he was the lead for Hong Kong, most sources say he unexpectedly dropped out just days before the movie was to begin filming. In 1974, Rockney starred as the title character in the black exploitation movie Black Samson, and as a supporting character in another black exploitation film, Black Starlet. From 1974 to 1976, he appeared four times as different characters in Police Story. He reunited with Richard X. Slattery when they both had small roles in the 1976 adventure film Zebra Force. Over the next half dozen years, Rockney appeared in single episodes of four series, in four films, and in seven TV movies. From 1982 to 1984, he played the recurring character Too Mean Malone in Matt Houston. He then appeared occasionally in films, TV movies, and in series over the next 10 years until his retirement in 1994. Rockney left acting in the mid-90s after returning to Kansas when his mother was ill. Moved by her situation, he decided to turn his life to religion and find a church to which he could commit. After visiting several, he saw a television commercial for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The commercial provided a phone number to call for more information, but he missed the number. A few months later, he finally saw the commercial again and was eventually baptized as a Mormon in 1997. Rockney passed away in 2015. 
But that's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take care of yourself, care for one another, and take Andy's advice and act like somebody. Well, thank you, Randy, for that great report. Uh, you know, that's I didn't know any of that stuff about it. If you want to make sure you don't miss out on the stuff that Randy's doing online, make sure you send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com, turnersgrade at gmail.com, and he'll make sure you don't miss out on any of the great information that he keeps finding. Because Randy is, uh, man, he is a great researcher because uh, I don't I don't know any of that kind of stuff. So that's that's great. So thank you again, Randy. Thank you for being here. I hope I didn't bore you with uh, reports about what we did at the Mayberry Meetup. Uh, keep our fingers crossed that we're going to have uh, Mayberry Days and nothing, you know, things are uh, the way they're going right now. I just don't know. So I'm really a little bit concerned, but hopefully we'll have it. I'd like to hear from you. I did get one note I should have read from Kathy, and I'll read that next week. Uh, But if you have any reports or words you'd like to say about the Mayberry Meetup, give me a call at 888-684-8415 or email me like Kathy did, and I'll read those next week here on the podcast, and hopefully we'll have some we can listen to because I'd a lot rather hear from you than from me. So... Definitely uh, let me know what you thought about the meetup if you were able to come and uh, just or any other information, anything you liked about the podcast, anything like that. I'd love to hear from you. So we'll hear from you then. You can email me at Floyd at iMayberry.com. Until next time, everybody, have a great Mayberry week, and we'll see you here on Two Chairs.